Hi everyone, welcome to this week's episode and today you join me somewhere a little bit different. Um, I've been invited to come down and fish this fishery for a couple of days. Um, it is a private lake at the moment but it will be open to the general public very very soon. So we are going to do a part two of this video um, because we've been invited again to come and fish it um, and do a video when it opens to the general public. So until then, I'm not allowed to say where I am. Um, the fishery has asked me to do that. I can film, but they just don't want me to say where I am at the moment. So I have to respect that. And that's why we're gonna do the part two of this video when it reopens. Uh, but it is an amazing place. Uh, it's a proper, proper lake, bit of me. So without further ado, I'm gonna get walking around, find some spots. But while I'm doing that, please give the video a thumbs up, make sure you comment down below, and hopefully I can bring you an absolute banger. This is an absolute gem. If I'm honest, I cannot believe that this is 30 minutes from where I live and I've never been here. It reminds me of like an old estate lake kind of feeling. Lots of like patches of weed, but also lots of clear spots within the weed. And uh, I think this is gonna be an epic video, if I'm honest. I'm hoping I can catch. I have had a walk round multiple times, hence why I'm sweating. But I found a good group of fish, maybe 15 to 20 some of them real big ones um, i'm told they go up to 36 in here so i have got the stuff around so we're going to go over there we're going to get set up well we're in the swim now and uh just before i get set up i just want to show you a little bit around see if you can see anything this i can't believe how incredible this place is um, i haven't got any bait made up so what I'm gonna do is just show you guys where I am and then we'll go through the bait and the rigs. But um, I'm not sure if you're gonna be able to see these car, but they are still here. Um, let me show you. So yeah, this is, I should imagine this is a double swim, but this is one of the swims. There's loads of fish. Keep going, dipping down through here. There is a couple on the surface. I'm not sure if you can see them. But what I'm going to do is go into this one because the bigger fish are definitely here. There's none you can see on the surface at the moment. But I have got the Parker Beta and they're going through here. So what I'm going to do is ship a bait out into the middle of that. Uh, just like there is one there. There is a carp there. I love this, watching the carp. Absolutely incredible. Look at the lake fishing all from one side as well so you can fish to yeah nice one barrow's just gone over lovely old job as i was saying yeah you can fish all to this side because there's no swims up here you can also walk all the way around there as well and bait up from there washing line tactic would be very good here but yeah, that's it. I am going to pick the barrel up, because all my stuff's gone everywhere, and get set up. So I'll show you what I'm using and tell you why I'm using it. See you in a bit. Right, what I've done is I'm um, set up the Parker Beta. As you can see down here, got it all in sections of twos. I'm just gonna ship a little bit of bait out, a little bit of OG fish pellets, a bit of crumb, and uh, put them on a Ronnie rig because there's fish out here and I just don't want to ignore it. I don't know if you can see them. Just dip down here. So what I'm going to do is just, as I said, ship them out with some Ronnies on and uh, just see see what happens and then get set up properly. But um, there's too many fish just coming through that area to ignore. So I'm just going to get them out with a Parker Baita and uh, see what happens whilst I get set up and then we'll mix up some bait and go through that. So I'll check in with you 
in a minute. Right, we're gonna knock up some bait now, make a mix. It is getting pretty late on now. Oh, I did turn up to the lake pretty late, to be honest. I think it's about half five now, nearly six. Um, but this place is really making me think about my fishing. I haven't even got the second rod out yet. I couldn't find a spot on the, the left-hand side of the swim. It was just too weedy every time, just plugging straight in. Um, you're not allowed to use leaders here, so I don't want to use like a, a naked helicopter system just because the weed is so bad I don't want to be cut off but on the right side I have found some clean spots in amongst the weed so I've put one out just on a, a Ronnie rig with a pineapple pop up on there with a couple of handfuls of boilies round um, and before we get the second rod out we're just going to mix up some bait so let's do that we're going in with the OG fish. Everything is OG fish. This is the shelf life um, boilies. As you can see, look at them, absolutely incredible. Amazing, look at that. So we're gonna go in with a kilo of that. Um, and a kilo of OG fish chops. What a chops is going to do is just keep the fish grubbing around that bit longer. I'll just show you this. As you can see, there's a mixture of different sizes in there. Hopefully, that's just going to keep the fish just grubbing around in the zone a little bit, a bit, a little bit longer. So. I'm going to just start off with that to begin with, a kilo of, of uh, boilie and a kilo of chops because, as I said, it is making me think, There's, there is big fish in here, it's not an overly fished place and I've, I've, put that little, I've put a lead in the water and the fish have disappeared, there must have been 20 odd carp here and they, they've just disappeared. I have seen a few crews in a bit further back, they wasn't close. Um, so I'm just gonna lightly bait for now. But what I think is going to happen, there's a lot more weed and lily pads up this area, which is gonna hold the carp during this, this hot period, what we've got right now. And I think at night time, they're gonna move out. So what I'm gonna do is stay up a bit later than usual and listen for the carp let's try see where they're moving out if i can see but your ears is what's gonna you're gonna need at night time they're, they're definitely gonna move out of here and if you can hear them jumping that further down there may be fish here during the day this is this is my plan i'm gonna fish do tonight here listen tonight if they are moving out down the lake i will carry on the rest of the day tomorrow here because i know they're going to come back here and hold up in in this weed and then I'll probably move further down the lake in the evening and go through in tonight. But we'll play it by here for now. But let's just carry on with the bait. So in with the bait I've got Yoji fish sauce. This is a pure liquid food. Put a nice heavy amount of that in. Give it a good mix up. And then we've got the OG Fish Magic Dust. Now this is probably one of my favorite products in the fruit and nut and OG Fish, just because it gives a nice crust around your boilies if you leave them out to dry. And you get a nice halo effect on the bottom of the lake from your boilies. And there's thousands of different food particles coming off of all your bait, which is a lot of attraction. So, sorry, I'll cut the camera there because uh, the fishery owner come over and we just had a chat for the last half an hour. 
And while she was having a conversation, I think I got done by a fish. It picked up, bobbing and hit the rod, and uh, slowly dropped back down. So I don't know whether that was a savage liner or I've been done. More than likely, I think I've been done. But as I said, we, we've been mixing up some bait. As I showed you before, it's all, all OG fish. Yeah, boilies, magic dust, um, crumb. Obviously this is a magic dust, now putting some more of this in. And we are nearly about done. You'll have something like that. And that is really gonna keep them grubbing around you. I mean, you've got whole boilies in there, crumb. There's loads of little bits in there. Thousands of little food particle. So what I'm gonna do is get this second rod out now. Um, Put, this, put a bit of this out and see what tonight brings and as I said I'm, I'm going to listen out for the carp tonight and uh, go from there see if we need to move tomorrow see what happens I'm, I'm nervous for this one I am nervous this lake is really making me think but yeah I'm going to get this second rod out and uh, get some probably get some dinner on because it is getting on now and see what happens I'll catch you in a bit getting this second rod out there I thought I'd just show you what's what I'm using what I've got set up I've got a Kevlar leader on here because of the weeds this is something me and a fishery owner was just talking about um, it, it, it is weedy but there is there is clear spots and I think with the amount of weed that leaders at the moment will be more safe for the fish less likely to get cut off and things like that um, maybe if it was clearer um, there wasn't so much weed then maybe there wouldn't be need for the leaders but i think at the moment uh, she understood as well um, that leaders are quite feasible right now not lead core leaders fluorocarbon or the uh, kevlar leaders and i've got a lead clip to that with a three ounce dumpy pair and i've gone for a long hook link maybe nine nine inches something like that with a fruit and nut white pop-up over the top and that is what we're going to put out now so let's go do that well that's both rods in now I'm happy with them for tonight I'm just going to put a bit of bait over the top we can scoop this straight on fishing close in so yeah let's get a bit of this out well time is really getting on now um, it's pretty apparent that the fish have moved that's what I thought anyway uh, when I put the the first rod out I was getting some savage liners put the second rod out I had a few liners on that you can still see the fish sort of in the zone and now there is carp sort of jumping halfway up the lake which puts me in a bit of a predicament I don't know whether I should move now or hold out till the morning but there is someone due on in the morning so I don't know whether I will get into a swim I want down there I just got to see how it goes but they've definitely they've definitely moved just as I thought they would but then I'm pretty sure they're gonna come back up and sit in this weed and in these pads probably late morning I'm sure there'll be a couple cruising through her in the night but fishing like this you're always picking fish off coming through you're never really going to get a good hit of fish to say although i i haven't personally had a good hit of fish fishing in between weed you always just pick the odd one up so maybe moving would pay off better i think 
but that's all part of learning a new fishery as you find out these things so I'm just gonna I'm just gonna play it by here maybe we'll see it out till the morning and then move but let's see how it goes as I say if anything happens I'll be sure to check in I may change over the rigs all to hinge stiffs because I'm pretty sure I am fishing that's going down with a donk but I just think maybe hinge stiffs in this situation might be a bit better so I might do that but whatever I do do I will check in and let you know catch you in a bit right, there we go guys that is fish number one and uh, that was off the left hand rod where I lost that fish earlier that was probably a lot bigger than this but I am more than happy that's telling me the tactics right and I've redeemed myself off that spot and that's a cracking little fish probably mid double but it don't really matter when they look like that that's an epic little stocky that over the moon I'll show you the other side the other side like a little football but um, I've heard a couple more fish jump over the same spot so I'm gonna quickly get her back and uh, get that rod straight back out there happy days morning it's currently half five in the morning and uh, I've just been done on the uh, right hand rod screaming take bobbin was just locked solid up to, the, to the top of the rod when I got out there and uh, nothing so I've been royally mugged off but that shows we've got two spots rocking now but I don't know what to do today whether to move or stay here because it was pretty apparent that there was big fish jumping sort of halfway down that lake and at the bottom end whether they're going to push back up here today I don't know there is still fish in my zone there was fish jumping here last night they didn't sound anything like the fish that were further down the lake I mean the fish that was jumping down there sounded like someone was dropping washing machines out of the sky um, <clears throat> so I don't know whether to move and try for one of them bigger ones or stay here I might just play it out here see how we get on I'm hoping it's going to be a bit hotter it's a bit like misty at the minute it's not that warm I'm hoping it'll get warmer and that'll push the fish up this end of the lake because uh, it was hot yesterday and you know there was probably in excess of 20 carp up this end of the lake so they clearly like to be up here when the sun's out so that's what we've got to hope for but as I said there was there was fish jumping here last night um, so they are, they are still here they're just not the size of the carp that was down the other end of the lake 
but I've currently got that rig out or the rod out at the moment. I'm just gonna redo that rig. That was with the uh, fruit and nut pop up on the right hand rod. So we're gonna get that done, get that back on the spot, get a little bit more bait out. I did find when I was putting the bait in, I didn't want to be putting too much bait in and to be honest that didn't work um, when the bites came I'd actually put quite quite a couple of heavy scoops chuck straight over the top of both rods and then start getting take so they clearly do like the bait in here so I have gone heavier with the bait and that seems to be working at the moment <clears throat> so yeah plan of action is get that rod redone get a fresh rig on there um, and get that back out on the spot with a couple of scoops of bait over the top and I might just get my head down for another hour of sleep because I'm knackered I didn't go to sleep till gone one last night because I was listening out for those fish um, see where they was moving on the lake so yeah I'm pretty knackered so I might just, I'm just gonna get this rod out and get my head down and I'm sure if I have anything, I'll pull the camera out. I will see you in a bit. Well guys, sorry I haven't done much filming. There hasn't been much to report on since the last video this morning. And uh, I've been spending the sort of morning and afternoon with the owners which are very nice people um, they certainly know how to run a fishery and very knowledgeable people I'm just currently walking around the lake um, because there's nothing going on in my swim I'm, I'm pretty sure that I've pushed them carp out that was there I mean we've we've managed to nick one lost two but um, I'm pretty confident they're gone. I have seen a couple on the back margin jump in my swim. So what I'm thinking is to possibly um, put a washing line across. It's something I, I haven't done before. A tactic I know how to use, but I haven't done it. And I think it may be a good idea to try that. Um, but we're currently just lapping, see if we can see anything. Um, and potentially move. If, if I don't see anything, we are gonna go for the, the washing line tactic across the lake. Um, obviously, that's gonna pick that line up out of the water. But, let me just have a look down. This is the bottom end of the lake where I heard the fish last night. They was definitely down here in numbers. I can't see anything right now, but they definitely were down here during the night. This is the bottom end. I mean, as you can see, it's, it's pretty weedy, but I like fishing like this. It's my style of angling. It's not too much of a problem for me. I can't see, I can't see anything. Yeah, I, I can't see any carp down here. I mean, the problem is there's so much weed that if they're if they're head up, uh, held up in there and the pressure's dropped today, they're not going to be right up in the water. You're probably not going to see them anyway, so it's making it harder on what I should actually do. But I think for now, I have as I said, I've seen seen a couple jump on the back margin um, maybe we should give it a little bit longer uh, and put that washing line over there and just see if that results into any kink because I can't see anything else anywhere and I don't really want to move when I've had a couple jump in my swim um, 
Yeah, I think that's what we'll do, but look at that, the lake is lush. Absolutely beautiful lake, this. Yeah, let's go back, get a little washing line set up, and get that out, and I'll run you through that in a second. Well, I'm just going to get a bait on this um, other rod that we're going to put over to the uh, far margin. So, I'm just going to get this baited up with a fruit and nut pop up on a hinge stiff. Who remembers these? These were the Parker Bait specials. Still got a few of these left. Smell absolutely insane. So, yeah, we're going to put this onto a hinge stiff. As I said, the hinge stiff is giving me the best way to sort of present um, when I was using a Ronnie. It weren't coming back clean, that was just making me doubt myself to, you know, whether I was actually fishing or not. So, I used the, the hinges last night and they've come back clean every time, so that's telling me that I am fishing, so that's all I need to know. Right, but that's that. That's the hinge. Obviously, I'll sit up like that, I'll put a curve in, curve in the uh, monofilament there. That's that. And the washing line tactic is this. Old school way. What we're going to do is put this in the ground. I'll take the camera over when we show you and just feed the line into this hair bubble here. And, uh, yeah, come back to the rod, reel it up tight. And that should work. But, um... One thing I will say is when you use this tactic, it is, I mean, I haven't used it, but I've watched a lot on how actually to use it properly. So, and I would say 90% of takes are always going to be drop back. So that's something to remember when you're using a wash and line tactic, that they are going to be drop back bites and not screamers. So that's something to uh, take into consideration. Um, you know, if you're a heavy sleeper like me, maybe do not use that in the night. I'm going to use it for the day and the day only, for the sake of the fish. Um, yeah, I won't use it at night because I don't think, if I get a drop back and it's only a few beeps, I don't think I'll wake up. So let's go get this out. the rig and now a simple case of placing this where you need it to go or where you want it to go and just get some bait over the top so I've got the rod on the um, buzz bars the opposite side um, and I'm just pulling some line out always keep the line tight so here we go this is the end end part I'm going to pull that tight and drop this in where we need it to go. Right, there we go. I've got that where I want it. And we're going to simply pinch the line together. So it creates a hoop, the bit going down to the lead and the bit going to 
the rod. And all you're going to do, you've got your elastic band, hair bobble, whatever you want to use, around the twig that you've stabbed into the floor. You're going to pull, pull the band away and put the hoop of the line inside. So when the fish takes, it's going to just pull, it's just going to slip straight out. There's no worry here whatsoever. So that is what we're going to do. And there we go. Right, that is the um, washing line tactic done. I'm just going to scoop some bait in now and get back and tighten that line up. There we go. Well, now it's a simple case. I'm just pulling this back. getting that line nice and tight so it pulls out of the water you'll see it lift it's going the whole way across the lake now and that is locked in and that is done I don't know how well you'll see it on the camera or if you can see that line and across and yeah that's that done now we're not going to do we're not going to do the same tactic on the other rod I'm going to keep that on the same spot which is half a wrap really close in um, as I said it's produced three bites one landed so it'd be silly not to put a rod back out on there so that is where that rod's going to go same um, hook bait and same rig so let's get that out yoo I did not believe this. I've got snagged on the other side, but I've got a calf on. Oh, oh she's mine. Unfortunately guys, the microphone had decided to stop working during this point, but luckily for the rest of the video, I managed to get it all working fine. But what I'm explaining is that whilst I was using the washing line tactic and I got everything over there fine, that I hadn't checked for any snags going into the water from the far margin. 
And unfortunately, when I was playing the fish from the other side, there was a snag uh, going into the water that I hadn't seen. And my line had got wrapped around that as it had come off of the washing line tactic. And I got snagged. But I'd managed to put the rod down, thinking the fish was probably gone. But I managed to walk around and actually get the line by my hand. And when I started pulling in, I saw the fish was still attached. And uh, so I started pulling in and luckily there was a net over that side. So I should imagine this is a tactic that is used quite frequently there. Um, so I managed to get that net and uh, scoop the fish in. Fish was all safe and fine. Got my stuff over there. And here is the carp. And what an absolute banger it is. My f***ing check one two. Why is the mic not working? One two one two. Well, I'm sure as you just saw, um, I've got the rod straight back out on the spot, on the washing line tactic. And I can't tell you how happy I am that that actually worked. I knew it would work, but when you haven't used something before, your confidence is knocked a little bit. But this was the perfect opportunity to use it. Um, there was fish jumping over there and I was, I was, I had a couple of casts and because it's, because of the weed, I just weren't confident I was fishing, you know. Um, and I thought, I'll just give that a go. And it worked, and I was absolutely over the moon. Um, yeah, unfortunately, I got snagged um, just on the bank on the other side. But um, I thought the fish was gone, so I put, I put the rod back down and I, I walked round. Luckily, there was a net on the other side of, of there. So which tells me this is a tactic that's probably been used here before. Um, yeah, so now I've got the line and the fish was still attached to it, so I managed to get the fish in the net and uh, that's showing that the tactic worked. So we've put that back out. I will only do it till dark um, and then I'll go to the spots I was fishing last night just because um, you don't get a very good indication um, fishing that tactic, so it's not something I want to use while I'm asleep. And yeah, I'm just I'm just over the moon. I'm gonna um, get settled now. I'm gonna put some food on. Maybe I might show you what I'm having. Um, clean the bivvy up, and hopefully that washing line goes again. Come on, the Parker Bates. Well, there we go. caramelized onion burgers now the question is what is the best sauce to have on your burgers make sure you comment down below and tell me yours because this is definitely mine this is absolute bang bang now I ain't gonna bore you while I eat my food so I'm going to tuck into this and maybe redo the rods in about an hour and I'll see you then. Well this is just a bit of an update from the last video when I had dinner. Um, the rods were already out, I was 
as I said, one on a washing line tactic to the far margin. And once I had dinner, it is just non-stop rain. I'm not sure if you can hear it. I'm pretty sure you will be able to because it is barren it down. And it has not stopped, so I haven't really been able to do any filming. I haven't really been able to watch the lake or see anything, but I have heard carp jump into the uh, right-hand margin a bit further than I can get down. So I have moved the rod off the far margin on the washing line tactic because I don't want to use that to say why I'm asleep. Um, it doesn't give me very good indication, so I don't want to do that. So I've moved that one down to the right-hand margin. Just a scoop of bait over the top. Just got a mixture of OG fish, pellets, coilies, crumb. Just one scoop over the top. And I'm hoping that'll do a bite. Um, I don't know if I'd want to bite right now. So it is absolutely coming down. So I think for now I'm going to put get a cup of tea on and just listen and then probably go to bed and hopefully I will see you before I wake up with another cup or I'll see you in the morning morning and uh, nothing through the night unfortunately but with the rain it was it was carnage I don't think I got to sleep until I'd gone to because it was so loud on the bivy and uh, if the rod would have gone I don't think I would have gone out there and got it anyway I'd have been absolutely drenched. But we've got up this morning. I've got both of the rods in. I don't know if you can see them behind me. And we're going to put fresh baits on them, get them back out on the spots, and put the left hand rod back to that margin spot across the bank on the uh, washing line tactic, as that worked pretty well yesterday. And just see if we can get another carp. But I am off today, so I'm going to have a, a slow pack up. We have got till this afternoon and just see what happens. So without further ado, I'm going to get them rods rebated up, back out on the spots and get me some porridge on. Happy days. Well, there we go, guys. That's fish number three. Cracking, cracking little common that. I ain't got into the bigger ones yet, but hopefully you can see the strain of carp that's in here. They, they are absolutely beautiful fish, and they're absolutely pristine condition as well. Like the mouths, absolute mint. I'm happy with that. Let me just show you the other side. Look at that, pristine little common that. Just imagine her at 20, 30 pound, that would look absolutely epic. That's the future of this lake. Let's get this one back, because that come on the washing line tactic, it couldn't have been out there no longer than 15 minutes, and it went, so let's get that straight back out on the spot. Water is so cold. <laughs> come on, come on. Come on. Just gonna have to scoop and hope that she's in there. Well, here we go, guys. I always say that, don't I? Here we go, guys. 
This is a bit. This is a bit better. This one. Mega carp off the washing line tactic again. This has proven to be really effective for me this trip. This washing line tactic. Look at that for a carp. Mega, mega fish that. Let's show you the other side. There it goes, the other side. Mega, mega fish. It's got a couple of little marks on there. So I'm just going to treat her before she goes back with some carp care and get that rod straight back on the same tactics and hopefully we can get another one. Happy days. Well, I can't believe how effective this tactic's turning out to be for me. I'm on four fish now. As you see, I'm soaking wet from that fish just then. But yeah, I'll just show you. Um, so basically, I think i had done a video anyway, but I'm just casting to the other margin over there. Literally like just here. And then I've got a twig over there, I've stabbed into the ground with a hairband on. And what I'm doing is putting my rig in by hand, pulling the line back, letting it sink, and just tucking it through the hairband so when the carp takes you just you're just getting singular beeps beep beep on the um buzzers and then you've obviously got to hit the fish straight away because it is a drop back and uh you're off but it's been really effective i can't believe how good it's actually worked so yeah without further ado i'm gonna get another that's all on the fruit and that that one over there so i'm gonna get Another pop up on there, cast it over to the far bank and get that back on. But we ain't got long before we've got to leave, maybe a couple of hours. So, yeah, I'm gonna do that sharpish and hopefully, hopefully, fingers crossed, we can get another one. See you in a bit. Everything's slowly getting packed up now. I'm almost ready to leave. I've currently just got one rod out at the moment. Um, I'm just gonna leave that one. Not bother putting the other one out. Just see if we can nick a bite on that rod just before we leave. I'm feeling pretty confident we will. I've seen a couple of fish jump at the back there. Not on my spot, but it's come quite apparent. I have worked out this lake in the 48 hours I've done um, or sussed a little bit of it out so I now know that the far margin is a, is a good spot they must cruise up and down there I should have gone with that to the begin with to be fair because I fish a lake pretty similar to this which is all fishing from one side um, that's part of fish, uh, fishing a new fishery you learn as you go but we're definitely going to come back. The owner has invited us to come back in the winter when this lake opens properly to the public and me and him are going to do a couple of sessions and see if we can get into the, the real nice carp that are in here. The ones I've caught are lovely but there is some really nice big carp in here and unfortunately I haven't been able to hook any this trip but I'm excited for the next time I come here and do some filming with the owner. I think it's going to be absolutely brilliant. And this lake will then be open to the public. So I'll check in with you just before I leave. Well, sadly, that's the end of the trip here at this amazing complex. I have thoroughly enjoyed myself. And I just want to say thank you to the owners for allowing me to come down here and fish this amazing place um, great opportunity as i said this lake will be open um, to the public very very soon um, they're just gonna clean out the sort of clean out some weeds uh, clean out the banks doing some works on the lake and then they want it open so it's 
spick and span for everybody else. But um, yeah, until next time, stay safe and be lucky.